here at ASCO, we've had a major educational session focusing on the current issues regarding therapeutic endeavors for CLL in 2016. And there's lots of unanswered questions. I was joined by some expert faculty, including Michael Halleck from the German Lymphoma, or I'm sorry, CLL Study Group, and Dr. Jennifer Brown from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And the three of us really discussed where CLL therapy is at this time and focus on the use of different agents for different individual patients. We know that chemoimmunotherapy isn't appropriate for perhaps older or unfit patients, but it still provides a major benefit for younger, more fit patients, and in particular provides potential for long-term survival without additional therapy, and data from the MD Anderson Cancer Center as well as from Germany support that. We do know, however, that many patients cannot get standard chemoimmunotherapy. So we're looking at agents like ibrutinib, which is a BTK or Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor, idelalisib, and the newer drugs, which are known as acalabrutinib, uh, TGR-1202, and the list goes on and on. What we did today is we tried to figure out where the right places are to use those drugs today, how to sequence these drugs, and what the data is to support that. Unfortunately, the data is relatively sparse to answer many of the important questions that we still need to know. Those questions are, how long do we need to treat people with these agents? Can we actually stop treatment? If so, can we re-challenge patients and get them to respond again? We need to know actually how to sequence these agents, if we're even supposed to be sequencing them. Can patients fail one of these kinase inhibitors and still have a toxicity profile that will allow them to get a second inhibitor, or perhaps an inhibitor of BCL2, such as a drug called venetoclax. We also want to know ways to overcome resistance, and we're actually able to really measure now mutations that happen related to these drugs and predict that they are going to relapse on a clinical standpoint by following their molecular relapse. And trying to develop strategies that will be important for those patients is very valuable. And we're looking at ways to overcome Richter syndrome or Richter transformation. That's very important. Those are very aggressive patients, and we're looking at strategies such as checkpoint blockade, and uh, we're looking at things like CAR T-cell therapies or chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapies that look to be very promising for those settings, perhaps those more aggressive Richter transformation patients.